Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Pranam, Pranam, Maharaj, uh, the devotees are still joining, so we would just allow them a couple more minutes. Sure, yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept Hare Krishna Yes, Okay, can we begin, Mariji? Uh, yes, Omagyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksuru Nilitanyena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Vanchakalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. So I've shared the screen. Is everyone able to see it okay? Yes, yes, Maharaj. Good. Okay, so 
uh, in the last class we finished chapter 2, we're going to go on today and look at chapter number 3, the change in heart. So the chapter begins with discussion on demigod worship. We'll hear about, how, because the first chapter is describing the Brahman, the first step in self-realization. The second chapter was about the Paramatma. So the third chapter is more Upasana Kanda and worship of the Supreme Lord. So after discussing about different demigods and how you can get material benefits from them, then Sukadeva Goswami goes on to describe about worshipping Krishna, which is, of course, the ultimate path. And then the rest of the chapter, after hearing Sukadeva Goswami glorify pure devotional service, worshipping Krishna, then we will hear from Shonakarishi. So it's a change from Sukadeva Goswami talking to Maharaj Parikshit. We're, we're back in Naimisharanya and Shona Karishi's heading the sages. And he's speaking on behalf of the sages to Sutta Goswami. But Shonaka is a very powerful orator and he has a lot of things to say, a lot of valuable points to make. And we will hear from him. So he begins with some inquiries and then verses 17 to 20, we'll hear Sonika criticize those people who won't listen to Krishna Kata. In other words, they're not devotees, they're not willing to hear about Krishna. And then in verses 20 up to 24, Shonaka continues to attack the non-devotees and he talks about the limbs and other parts of the body which are not engaged in the service of Krishna. And he will give some nice examples, also nice analogies comparing them, how, what they're like. So it's a nice chapter, very nice chapter. And we're here first of all the connection with the previous chapter. So Sukadeva Goswami, remember at the end of the second chapter, Sukadeva Goswami had answered Maharaj Pariksit's question, which had been made in the first canto in chapter 18. Maharaj Pariksit had inquired about the duty of a man who was about to die and what they should be thinking about how the, and how, how they can absorb themselves in Krishna Kata. So then the question comes up, what about someone who has material desires? Whom should that person worship to fulfill those desires? And so it's it's uh, a little different. You see Maharaj Parikshit, you could say, well, he's a great devotee, you know, and for him to think of the Lord, it's probably not very difficult. But what about all of us? Well, we are, you know, struggling with our mind and senses, and we have attachments and material desires. So is it different for us? Should we... You know, it's difficult for us to do like what Maharaj Parikshit did, to just give up everything, you know, renounce his kingdom, take off everything, all this, and leave the whole family and everything. Now, for most of us, that's going to be a very difficult thing to do. And probably the family wouldn't let you do it. <laughs> right? The family will never let you go. So we have these problems, we're faced with attachments and desires, so is it different? What should the person like that do to fulfill, uh, you know, should, who should, should we worship somebody else? How, how should we worship to satisfy our different desires? 
So as a prelude to his answer, Sukadeva Goswami starts by listing the personalities one may worship in order to fulfill one's material desires. <laughs> right? You have material desires, so you can worship different demigods. There are so many different demigods. And you have material desires. You have to consider what material desires you have. Okay, you know, I have this material. I want money. Okay, we worship Lakshmi. Oh, I want uh, good health. You have to worship the sun god. I wish I want better education, better knowledge, worship Saraswati, different things like that. So, uh, here you see the first verse. Sri Sukadeva Goswami said, Maharaj Parikshit. As you have inquired from me as to the duty of the intelligent man who is on the threshold of death, so I have answered you. Right? So Sukadeva Goswami has told Maharaj Parikshit that he should simply hear and chant and worship the Supreme Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. However, can could somebody read text number two? Or, or have you some have, have you got a book there? Yes, Maharaj, I have. Chapter, which chapter? Third chapter. Third chapter, chapter three. Yeah. Text number two. Merit. Yeah, please. Um, the verse? Yes, if you can read. Yes. Brahma Varchas Kamastu Yajita Brahmana Hapatim Indra Indra Mindriya Kamastu Praja Kamaha Prajapatim. Yes, can you give the translation? Yes, Maharaj, this it, it, it has from second to seventh verse. Right, all the verses are together, right? So maybe you read the whole thing. Just read the translation, text 2 to 7. Yes, Maharaj. One who desires to be absorbed in the impersonal Brahma Jyoti effulgence should worship the master of the Vedas, Lord Brahma or Brihaspati, the learned priest. One who desires powerful sex should worship the heavenly king, Indra. And one who desires good progeny should worship the great progenitors like called the Prajapatis. One who desires good fortune should worship Durga Devi, the superintendent of the material world. One desiring to be very powerful should worship fire. And one who aspires only after money should worship the Vasus. One should worship the Rudra incarnations of Lord Shiva if he wants to be a great hero. One who wants a large stock of grains should worship Aditi. One who desires to attend the heavenly planets should worship the sons of Aditi. One who desires a worldly kingdom should worship Vishwadeva. And one who wants to be popular with the general mass of population should worship the Sadhya demigod. One who desires a long span of life should worship the demigods known as the Ashvi Kumaras. And a person desiring a strongly built body should worship the earth. One who desires stability in his post should worship the horizon and the earth combined. One who desires to be beautiful should worship the beautiful residents of the Gandharva planet. And one who desires a good wife should worship the Apsaras and the Urvashi society girls of the heavenly kingdom. One who desires domination over others should worship Lord Brahma, the head of the universe. One who desires tangible fame should worship the personality of Godhead. And one who desires a good bank balance should worship the demigod Varuna. If one desires to be a greatly learned man, 
he should worship Lord Shiva. And if one desires a good mar marital relation, he should worship the chaste goddess Uma, the wife of Lord Shiva. Thank you very much. So, I hope it didn't give you too many material desires hearing all these things. Hearing this long list, you may think, oh, okay, I have to do this puja, I have to worship that demigod. Oh. <laughs> so, I hope it didn't distract you too much. Remember, worship of all these different demigods is condemned by Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. And you've studied that before. All right, now we want to hear text number eight. Who would like to? Yes, please. One should worship Lord Vishnu or his devotee for spiritual advancement and knowledge. And for protection of heredity and advancement of a dynasty, one should worship the various demigods. Okay. And then text number nine. Raja Kamo Manun Devan, Mirit Tamta Vicharan Yajit, Kamo Kamo Yajit Somam Akama Purusham Param. One who desires domination of a kingdom or an empire should worship the Manun. One who desires victory over an enemy should worship the demons. And one who desires sense gratification should worship the moon. But one who desires nothing of mental enjoyment should worship the supreme personality of God. All right, thank you very much. So we hear about worship of all different demigods, how they can fulfill any kind of different desires we have desires for power, prominence, and success. Hey, I'm trying to get past here. So, sorry. Um, so different, so many different demigods are there. We say 33 crore demigods are there. So many unlimited desires we can fulfill if you want to satisfy different demigods. And the, there's no end to them. And they go on. But then Sukadeva Goswami comes t to the conclusion here, text number 10. I'm sorry, I haven't got the fonts right. Of course, uh, something there that took it from another computer. Akama sarva kamo va moksha kamo daradi tevrena bhakti yogena yajeta purusham param. So this is a very important verse, probably a memorization verse, often quoted. A person who has broader intelligence, whether is full of all material desires, without any material desire or desiring liberation, must by all means worship the supreme whole, the personality of Godhead. So this is, you can see from the title of the slide, the wise choice. That why worship one demigod after another, one desire after another? You have a long list of different demigods. You have to worship so many different demigods. But if we simply worship the Supreme Lord, then it can fulfill all of our material desires. Whether we have all material desires or no material desires, or even desiring liberation. In either case, any of the cases, we must worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is Sukadeva Goswami's conclusion. He doesn't recommend, oh, you have material desires, oh, you have to worship this demigod. No. He's saying the, the, the real choice is to worship the Supreme Lord. And we have examples, of course, you, we see uh, how Dhruva Maharaj had material desire. Dhruva Maharaj is a good example. Someone with material desires. He wanted a, a very, um, he had a very ambitious 
program. He wanted a kingdom greater than his grandfather. He wanted to have a huge kingdom. And he, he did, he worshipped. He worshipped the Supreme Lord. He was guided, of course, by his spiritual master, Narada Muni. And ultimately he got purification. So we have many other examples of persons who also had material desires. Some people had no material desires. Some people desired liberation. So many different people are there. They all, the, the, the intelligent people will all worship the Supreme Lord, the Purusham Param, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And He will satisfy our desires if they're appropriate and according to our qualification. So this is Sukadeva Goswami's conclusion. It's describing about all of this. All right. So it, uh, it was mentioned there about having broader intelligence. Uh, Udharadi, Udharadi, the one who's broader, one who has broader intelligence. That in other words, the wise choice. So the next verse goes on to discuss more about this broader intelligence. You can see the continuation. How, you know, you may say, well, I'm not, I don't have that broad intelligence. Well, Sukadeva Goswami is telling us how we can develop the broad intelligence. Right? Can someone read this verse for me, please? Maharaj, can I try? Yes, please. Etavan eva yajatam iha nishreya chodaya bhagavatya chalo bhavo yad bhagavat sangata. Translation All the different kinds of worshippers of multi demigods can attain the highest perfectional benediction, which is the spontaneous attraction unflinchingly fixed upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead only by the association of the pure devotee of the Lord. Mm -hmm. All right, so you get it? How do you get that broader intelligence? You have to associate with the devotees. You need to get association with the pure devotees of the Lord. And that's why you come to ISKCON. ISKCON is the association of pure devotees. You come to this movement and you associate with people who are pure devotees. The Krishna Consciousness Movement is association of pure devotees. Prabhupada was asked, are there any other pure devotees on the planet beside you, Prabhupada? Prabhupada said, how many members do we have in our society? And he said, are all the devotees are pure devotees. And you associate with the devotees, you make advancement, you develop that broader intelligence to understand what is the real goal of life, the highest perfection, to attain the highest perfection of benediction. And what is that highest benediction? It is spontaneous attraction, unflinchingly fixed upon the Lord. So we want to have that kind of attraction. Wouldn't it be nice to come to that stage? We're completely fixed upon Krishna, and we're not interested, we're not drawn, we're not attracted to the material world. It's possible by association with the pure devotees of Krishna. All right. Text number 12 continues to hear more about the glories of bhakti. Can someone read it for me? Transcendental knowledge in relation to the Supreme Lord Hari is knowledge resulting in the complete suspension of the wave and whirlpools of the material mode. Such knowledge is self-satisfying 
due to its being free from material attachment and being transcendental it is approved by authority who could fail to be attracted shrimad bhagavatam 231 hmm. so sukadeva goswami is describing the glories of devotional service he's talking about transcendental knowledge is that knowledge in relationship to the supreme lord and it results the result of that knowledge is you're no longer affected by the material modes of nature you're no longer under the modes of passion and ignorance your mind is peaceful it is described self satisfying we should we should feel that kind of satisfaction in the self just like we describe sukadeva goswami that he is atma rama he's on the transcendental platform he takes pleasure in the self and describe you you're free from the modes of nature and you become freed from material attachment all the attachments which we have all the silly things we're so attached to uh one of the devotee maybe you know maybe you know bari jan prabhu bari jan prabhu is very senior devotee he does writing he wrote the book surrender unto me and he's writing also commentaries on the different cantos of shrimad bhagavatam so he he gave a nice example about attachment he was de describing he said one time he was staying in in a, a temple and and he had a bag and he had different things in the bag and he thought they were so important he thought they were so valuable he put them in his bag and and locked the bag and everything but then he had to go away he had to leave that temple go to another place and so it was some time later like a few years later he came back and he went back to his bag and he looked at the things and he just thought they're all useless <laughs> all useless things that he thought they you know at that time he was thinking they're so valuable but two years later they meant nothing they were useless and so the, i thought that it's very typical you know we we have so many attachments we collect things we become so attached to and someone says oh could i have this oh no no don't take that's mine and oh my but actually you never use it it's a book you never read or it's clothes you never wore for years and somebody's saying maybe we could take this and throw it away or give it to some oh no no i want that we we have so many attachments and it's only devotional service which helps us to understand these attachments and to get us free from these things because these kind of attachments are keeping us under the material energy so we we want to get above the modes and we can do it by cultivating transcendental knowledge which comes about by devotional service because the, the real root of devotional service was hearing that's most important that was stressed in chapter 2 also that was an important point which sukadeva goswami made to maharaj parikshit the importance of hearing we have to hear carefully and if we hear carefully then that hearing it goes to the heart and it will take positive effect will will be changed and, and this this point will come up also at the end of the chapter all right so uh going on to the second part of this chapter we're hearing about sonakarishi there you can see in the illustration sonakarishi and his eagerness for krishna katha he is the the spokesman of all the sages and he's addressing sutta goswami he's putting the questions to sutta goswami 
So he's a very good person to have in the audience. You have someone like Shona Karishi in the audience, you have to really be on the ball. You have to really be careful what you say because Shona Karishi is really sharp and he's really got things that he's got a very clear picture of material life and the problems which are here in the material world. So I have some quotes here from Prabhupada. Would someone like to read this for us? Similarly, Krishna's place, Golok Vrindavan, that is also spread everywhere. How that Golok Vrindavan becomes spread? As soon as there is devotee, yes. Tatra Tistam Narada Yatra Gayanti Mat Bhaktai Krishna says, Naham Tistami Vaikunta Nacha Yoginam Hridayashu. I do not stay in Vaikunta Loka or within the heart of the yogis. Tatra Tistami Narada Yatra Gayanti Mat Bhaktaya. I stay there where my devotees are chanting about me, about my glories. That is the process. Immediately. Goloka Eva Nivastate Akhiltam Mutaya Brahma Samita 5.37 That is Krishna's power. Omnipotency, omnipotency. Bombay, September 1973. Right. Does somebody know the verse? Do you remember this? How does it go? The full verse about Krishna said, I am not in Vaikuntha and I am not in the hearts of the yogis. Who knows the full verse? Yes, Prabhu. Yes. The other half. Yes, right. Lord Krishna is describing how he's attracted to the devotee chanting the holy name. And the Lord said, I am not in Vaikuntha and I am not in the hearts of the yogis meditating on me, but ever, I am wherever my devotees like. Which devotee? Which devotee in particular? Who sings my name? Who chants my name? Yes. What did, what what's the verse go again? Naham Tristani Vaikunte Yogi Namri Dayeshuva Tata Tristani Narada Yatra Gayanti Mad Bhakta. So Krishna Lord Krishna I said wherever my devotees like Narada are chanting my holy name. So he mentions that. And then Brahma Samita. What's the full verse? Goloka Eva Nivasati Akilatma Bhutto. Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Prati Prati Bhavita Dis Tabiriya Eva Vijaru Pataya Kaladi Goloka Eva Nivasati Akilatma Bhuta Govinda Mari Purusham Tamaham Bajani. Yes, you know the translation? That's that this is the verse which we sing every morning, right? In the Govinda prayers. I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, uh, who is... Yeah, uh, I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, uh, residing in his own realm, Goloka, with Radha, resembling his own spiritual figure, uh, the embodiment of the ecstatic potency possessed of the 64 artistic activities in the company of a confidence, Sakhis, embodiments of the extension of a bodily form uh, permeated and vitalized by his ever blissful spiritual rasa. Yes, right. Thank you. That's a, there's a very big purport to that verse. It's an important verse in Brahma Samhita describing how Krishna's power is so great, omnipotent, Krishna's omnipotency. It's omnipotent in the sense any one of his senses can perform the activities of any other sense. That's one aspect of his omnipotency. His senses are all interchangeable. He can eat 
with his eyes and he can feel with his tongue or with his ears. Each of the senses are interchangeable. It's Krishna is omnipotent. All right? And then going on here, this is text number 15. We, were, we heard about text number 13 about how broader intelligence, how to develop broader intelligence. Now we're going to hear about different types of devotees. You know, there, there are different levels of, because he was saying we should associate with devotees. So there are different kinds of devotees. And I was saying, well, everybody in ISKCON is a pure devotee. But it doesn't mean everybody's on the same level. You know, there are people who are advanced and there's people who are not so advanced. But they're all considered pure devotees if they're strictly following regulative principles. And if they're chanting 16 rounds every day, then we do consider them as being pure devotees. We want to understand, however, there's a difference between different levels of pure devotees. And there are different ways to come to that perfect stage. Hmm? Would someone like to read the slide for us? Such Mahabhagavatas are called Liptya Siddhas, or souls liberated from birth. But there are also others who may not be liberated from birth, but who develop a tendency for devotional service by association and they are called sadhana siddhas. There is no difference between the two in the ultimate issue. And so the conclusion is that everyone can become a sadhana siddha, a devotee of the Lord, simply by association with the pure devotees. Srimad Bhagavatam 2.3.15. All right, so the slide is entitled Nitya Siddha and Sadhana Siddha. Right, so the, there are different levels, different ways by which people come to, can come to perfection. Some people are eternally perfect, they're eternally liberated souls. They may come from the spiritual world. Can you think of some examples who are Nijasiddhas? Anybody? Shila Prabhupada. Shila Prabhupada. Maybe, I don't know. Can, 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 Goswami, Sanatan Goswami. Goswami. Yes? Prahlad Maharaj. Anicca Siddha. I don't know about that. The Anicca Siddhas, I was thinking, what about in Krishna Leela? Who are the Nitya Siddhas? Nand Maharaj. Huh? Nanda Maharaj, yes. Yes, Mother Shoda Yashoda. Nanda. Yes. Gopis. Nanda, the Gopis. Yes. Pandavas. Pandavas. Yes. Krishna's, Krishna's friends, like Madhu Mangal. Uh, yeah, the Gopas, so the cowherd boys, and Ma yeah, they are Nitya Siddhas. Mm. And sadhana siddha is becoming those who become perfect by their sadhana. Actually, there's another way also, there's something called kripa siddha. By mercy, by special mercy, one can also become perfect. So one time devotee asked Srila Prabhupada, what, what is kripa siddha? And Prabhupada explained it. He said, just like if somebody came up to you, someone who you'd never seen before, and they just came up to you and handed you one million dollars and said, here, take it. He said, that is Kripa Siddha. Does it ever happen to you? It didn't happen, right? You didn't have that experience. But that is Kripa. Kripa Siddha, this very special mercy. And some persons do become perfect by special mercy. 
For most of us, however, generally, the process is by sadhana we can become perfect. There are souls who come from the spiritual world. Some souls, like I think uh, Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, they're like examples of Nitya Siddhas who came to this world to take part in the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Um, of course, uh, Kavikarna Purna, he's written his book. He identifies different people who are in Krishna Leela and who have come in Chaitanya Leela. He identifies his different people. So, like that, they've been in Krishna Leela and they come in Chaitanya Leela. Generally, these are like Nitya Siddhas. And they're coming to be in the pastimes of the Lord. The Lord is enjoying their association. So they're liberated from birth. They have a natural attraction from birth. In Srimad Bhagavatam, we were told about who was it who had an attraction to worship Krishna from birth. As a very young child, he was always playing with dolls of Krishna. Huh? Parikshit Maharaj. Parikshit Maharaj and Uddhav. Yes, both Parikshit Maharaj and also Uddhav, also Uddhava. And Maharaj, Prahlad Maharaj, Prahlad Maharaj also was preached in the womb of mother. Okay, yes, Prahlad also. So from, from birth they had this natural attraction. But Prabhupada explains here in the purport, there are others who may be liberated from birth, but who may not be liberated, but who develop a tendency for service by association. And so they are called sadhana siddhas. By good association, they're drawn to take up devotional service. Well, I mean, you could say, Prahlad Maharaj was like that, that he developed his te a, t a tendency for devotional service by association. And Prabhupada said there's no difference between the two. And so the conclusion is everyone can become a devotee of the Lord simply by association. We must get the association of pure devotees. Prahlad got that association. We see Rupa and Sanatan, they were actually, they'd been ostracized from the Brahmin community and they'd become Mohammedans. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went there to Ramakali. Well, they had contacted, they had made an effort, they had reached out, they had written to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu describing their situation. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had read their letter and he was impressed and he wanted to bring them to Krishna consciousness. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came there to Ramakali, gave them some personal association, personal instruction and told them to get out of that situation. Remember they were both in very big positions. The Nawab Hussein Shah was ruling Bengal, then you can go. Like just recently I went to Ramakali and you can see the, the big ruins, the ruins of the palace which the which uh, Nawab Hussein Shah had. And even today there are many historians come from the Western world, they come to see the ruins of the Nawab Hussein Shah because he was ruling the whole of Bengal. And so his, his, uh, his palace and his, the different buildings which he con constructed, they're important historical ruins. They show something of the greatness of his empire and the power of his empire. The constructions are huge and it's all bricks and special bricks. 
So the Nawab Hussein Shah was living there, and, and Rupa and Sanatan, they were called Dabir Qasim Shah Karamalik. And one was the Prime Minister, and one was the Chancellor of the Exchequer. And so they were both so highly situated in his government. And they gave it all up to go and join Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Of course, they were not so young. To be in a position like that, to be, you know, big, such men in, in the big government position, they had to be mature and somewhat senior. But after they met Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they could give it all up and they could go to Vrindavan and they could write their books. So, yeah, they may have been Nichasiddha. General, we, we identify them, uh, Rupa Goswami is Rupa Manjari, mm, like that. The, their position in the spiritual world is given to us. So very, very elevated souls who came to help in the mission of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And, uh, and we talked about Srila Prabhupada also. That Srila Prabhupada also, as a child, he also played with deities. And we know about Prabhupada's love for the Ratiatra. So, it's written here. Someone can read for us this slide? A child naturally wants to play, so he can play with Krishna Devi. We had the opportunity of doing that. My father was worshipping Krishna Devi, so I wanted to imitate him and he gave me small Devi. That Devi is still worshipped. My sister and myself, whatever we were eating, we were offering exactly the same Arjuna. Yes, Prabhupada dedicates a Krishna book to his father. He said his father was also a pure devotee. Now Prabhupada's father, we never heard about him being initiated and we never heard about him doing any real preaching. But certainly his behaviour was very exemplary, that he always worshipped the deities of Radha and Krishna and he would always bring guests to the home and he had his son, Abhai, he had him trained to be a good devotee he had him trained in playing Madanga and he didn't want his son to go to the West to become a worldly person. So from these different uh, characteristic traits we can understand more about Prabhupada's father. That certainly he showed examples of pure devotion. It's not that you have to, you know, go off and preach and be a sannyasi and or do these things to be a pure devotee. Now the Prabhupada's father was a, a, a he was in married life, his wife died and he continued with the family. He brought the children up to be devotees. That's an important point. All right, so then it continues. Yes, Maharaji, you were reading, keep reading. Yes, Maharaj. This is the facility of taking birth in a Vaishnava family. Children, simply by playing with Krishna, they become Krishna conscious. Some way or other, if somebody comes in contact with Krishna, then his life becomes successful. So this Krishna yoga, Bhakti yoga can be practiced even by a child without interfering with his natural propensities. Hmm. So even children... Sometimes people are callous, they don't care about children, oh, they're just kids, so just like... But the children are very important, very, very important. We do need to put time and energy, and it, it, of course it needs patience. It's not easy bringing up children and t trying to train them and educate them. But it's a very, very important, very valuable service. And if you, if you can do it, then if you have that ability to be with children and to 
uh, educate them and to keep them happy. It's very valuable service, very important. So we, the children, of course, are the future devotees. Sometimes it's pointed out that if our children don't become devotees, then in the future we may not have any devotees. Because we cannot expect to always go on making new devotees. It becomes difficult to make new devotees. But if our own family members become devotees, if the children take up, that will be very powerful, very good. So, the whole purpose of Grihastha life is to produce Krishna conscious children who can go back to Godhead. That is the service of the Grihasthas, to produce children who will not take birth again in the material world. Okay, Mariji, go ahead. And father used to encourage this Rathyatra and the other Krishna temple, which are which we are propagating, it was from the very beginning of our life initiated by our parents. So anyone can initiate his child to this Krishna consciousness, understanding from the very beginning. Srimad Bhagavatam 2.3.15, Los Angeles 72. All right, so Srila Prabhupada's lecture on this verse. And he was describing there to the devotees in Los Angeles. Of course, in Los Angeles, we have a big Grihastha community. Actually, now, most everywhere we have Grihastha community. The devotees are all Grihasthas, everywhere. And so it's very important that they understand the, the responsibility of family life to bring up the children to be Krishna conscious. And Prabhupada always gave so much attention and concern about the children, how to see that they're properly trained, properly educated. Of course, it was difficult, there were challenges. But everything is difficult. Everything is difficult in the beginning doesn't mean you give it up. You have to continue. You have to be determined and persevere. And gradually, gradually, it happens. So, Prabhupada said, anyone can initiate his child to Krishna consciousness. You may not be very great devotee yourself, but you still want to encourage your child and to do everything you can to make the arrangements possible for your children to become Krishna conscious. Now Prabhupada tried himself, I mean Prabhupada had like five children and there were three sons and so we may say, well where are they? Well, they may not be involved with the Krishna consciousness movement but it doesn't mean they're not devotees. Just like I gave the example about Prabhupada's own father, that Prabhupada's own father was a very devoted man and he did bring up his child. Now Prabhupada's youngest son, he's, his name is Vrindavan Day, and he had a daughter, he was in his Grihastha life, he had a daughter and his, his daughter became a devotee of Iskon. And she joined Iskon. And she married a devotee. She married a devotee in Mayapur. However, there was a there was a tragedy happened. It, it was several years ago now. There was a tragedy. There was a flood in Mayapur. And during the flood, somehow, when the girl with her husband was, they were leaving Mayapur, and somehow the, the she fell into the 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 the. the well, the Ganga had risen so much, everywhere was flooded. And so she fell into, and, and she drowned. And so we lost her. She was uh, Prabhupada's own granddaughter. 
and she'd been initiated and she'd married a devotee. And so we we're all proud that Prabhupada's granddaughter is there. But unfortunately, she departed very early from the world. Uh, so that was one thing which happened. All right, so I think her granddaughter is still there. She had, uh, uh, I mean, the daughter of the, the girl who died, I, she had a child and I think the child is still there. Okay, we'll go ahead. This is a very important verse here. It's a nice verse to, to use in preaching. Very nice verse. Someone like to read for us? Hare Krishna. Ayur harati vai pum saam udyan astam jayan asau tasyar te yachano nita uttama shloka vartaya both by rising and by setting, the sun decreases the duration of life of everyone, except one who utilizes the time by discussing topics of the all-good personality of Godhead. Thank you. So, we see every day the sun rise and sun sets. And every day we should understand the duration of our life is decreasing. However, here you can see Shonaka is describing that there's an exception to this rule. That if we utilize our time to discuss the topics of the Lord, then we won't be so much affected by time. There are similar verses, just like in Upanishad, Ishopanishad, it mentions one may aspire to live for hundreds of years if he continues going on doing work in that way. For that work will not bind him to the law of karma. So this is the secret to understanding this verse. We may wonder, how is it possible that we can live, that we won't be affected by time? Isn't everyone affected by time? Yes, everyone's affected by time, but if we're discussing the topics of the Lord, then we're not on the material platform. We're on the spiritual platform. It is transcendental. It means we're above the influence of time and space. And so that is the benefit. The more we're absorbed in this discussing topics of the Lord, the more our duration of life is increased. Of course, we don't just want to have a long life. That's not desired. We were talking, those of you who were on Parikrama, you heard us talking about Markandeya Rishi, that he, he got the benediction from Lord Shiva that he could live through seven kalpas. But it just became a botheration for him, just so much trouble. And he came to Sarabi, he, came, but he, he finally found his way to Surabi Kunj. And at Surabi Kunj, Mother Surabi was there. So Markandeya pleaded to Surabi, please tell me, how can I get free of all of this suffering here? that I'm supposed to stay here for seven kalpas. It's all so, so much suffering in the ocean of devastation. So what did Mother Surabi do? She told him, she told Markandeya Rishi, you have to worship Lord Goranga. You take shelter of his lotus feet. And why? Because by worshipping Lord Goranga, then you will no longer have to fear birth and death then you will transcend the influence of time. So similarly here, Shona Karishi is describing the glories of discussing the topics of Krishna, Uttama Sloka Vartaya, Uttama Sloka, Lord Krishna. When we are discussing his topics, then we are not on the material platform. That is not of this material world. The sun is rising and setting, 
it's reducing the, the lives of all the materialists who are absorbed in the mundane. But if we're absorbed in the topics of the Lord, then we're not under the influence of time. There's no karma there. So it's important for us to keep ourselves always absorbed, try to dedicate as much as your time as possible to do hearing and chanting, to discuss the topics of Krishna, and to, or to read. That's why we, we put so much emphasis on distributing books. You have the books, you have the Bhagavatam, read it, you have to read it, and you will feel you will much benefit from it. I need the con connection to charge my phone. I need the cable to charge my phone. So we want to come to the transcendental platform. So this is the secret. Just keep your, keep busy discussing, thinking, hearing about the personality of Godhead. Someone can read? If you want to become immortal, Ayur Harati Vaipum Sham Sorry. Uddhyan Astam Chayan Asau. The sun is rising early in the morning. As it is rising, gradually it is taking your life. That's all. That is the business. But if you want to defeat the sun, sun is very powerful. It is very difficult to fight. But you can fight with the sun. How? Simply by reading Krishna Katha, the words of Krishna. Uttama Shloka Vartaya, Vartaya Uttama Shloka Krishna. So this is the simple process. You don't waste your time by talking nonsense. Okay, so Prabhupada is explaining. Sun is rising early in the morning. Oh, we're happy to see the sun. When it's cold in the morning, the sun comes out, we feel good. But we should understand it's taking our life. It's another day. So, Prabhupada said, you want to defeat the sun? How can you fight with the sun? Simply by Krishna Kata. Krishna is Ajita. No one can conquer Krishna. So, we want to come to this transcendental level. So Prabhupada said, don't waste your time by talking nonsense. So Prajapa. Yes, Prabhu, keep reading. So if we pass our time simply by reading and talking about Krishna, then the sun will not be able to take away our life. This is the secret. If you want to become immortal, then you always be engaged in Krishna Katha. Always, 24 hours. Always think of Krishna. This is Krishna Consciousness. June 12, 1972, LA. Krishna. Of course, our goal is not simply be to become immortal. <laughs> but the... The, the, I, we do want to transcend the material nature. Just having a long life is... Even Ramanuj was in this world, we, they say 130 years, but when he got to 130, he just wanted to leave. We've see, we see different devotees, sometimes they're incapacitated, they're in poor health, and somehow they're not allowed to die. Sometimes it's like that, it's difficult. You want to die, but you're not able to die. And sometimes death is the way out to avoid the miseries of the old age and disease. We don't want immortality in this world. We're looking for immortality that's there in the spiritual world. You go back to be with Krishna then you can have immortality. So just one more birth. All right, then Shonaka Rishi goes on to describe more about the material world. 
materialistic people. And he compares them to these four different creatures, hogs, dogs, camels, and asses. Right? Well, who, why does he compare man to people like, why, why is a man being compared to the dog? Would someone like to tell me? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, a man is compared to dog. Very faithful and coordinated by his master. And so he is a lot of people who are more materially attached, they are always very faithful and committed to their master. But more in material sense rather than spiritual, which is not the purpose because his master is not going to give him the liberations, but he is only going to help him serving this uh, poor basic need, which is as such, Lord's provide to everybody. Uh huh. Yes, the idea of the master, that's certainly there with the dog. Dogs are usually like domestic animals. They need some master. They need some home. And Pra who does Prabhupada give an example about what what does he talk about? Why does he say people are like dogs? Uh Maharaj? Yes. May I speak? Yes. Because uh, after getting big big degrees, they are searching always for a master. They are going here and there for getting a job. We need a job. So after the so called education they are also doing the same thing. Like yeah. the dog is searching for a master. Yes. Just as they are compared to Right. Did you have that experience when you went to college? Yes. Well after you graduated, did you have to go from door to door begging? Mm, I did job under a devotee Maharaj, so I didn't have to go. Oh you were lucky, yeah. All right. Anybody else? What about ladies? Do ladies also have to do this? Yes, Maharaji, let's hear from some Maharajis. What about Ratna Gopi Maharaj? Ratna, Ratna Prada, is it? Rati Prada. Rati Prada, Maharaji. Did you have to go and beg for a job? Yes, Maharaj. <laughs> you did, right? Maharaj, <clears throat> yes. I did have some struggle sometimes. Yes. Now I'm stable. Yes, now, now, now it's stable for some time, but in the beginning, after just coming from the college, we did have to search and go place to place and search for job. Yes, right. Yes, it's, it's a humiliating experience, really, isn't it? Yes, Maharaj. Sometimes it's very depressing. Yes, I, I had the experience myself also. You know, the same all over the world. It's not any different where you're from, you know. And in India, it's competitive. In the UK, it's also competitive, you know. <laughs> it's not that uh, they come and beg you, you know. <laughs> you have to go and look for the job yourself. Okay, so the dog mentality, the dogs, they, they need the master. And a, a lot of people are like that. They're in that condition. They're helpless. They need a master. They need to work for someone. Oh, I have no job. Oh. <laughs> and of course, people get very attached to their jobs also. You know, people often ask me, how did I become a devotee? And I tell them how, you know, I came to live in the temple and I still had a job, I was working. But then one devotee, the one devotee said to me, he said, give up your job. And, just, and whenever I say that, then everyone laughs. They all think, oh, what a, you know, what a, how could you ever give up? You know, they think it's so, they would never dream of it, you know. <laughs> They're so attached to their jobs, you know. They're so 
eager to keep their jobs. Of course, you need some kind of job. You do have to maintain your livelihood. But, you know, I was a young man and I was free and, you know, and they, they told me, you know, give up your job. And I, I didn't think about it. I didn't hesitate. I gave it up and I thought, anyway, if I want another job, I can always find another job. You know, I can always get a job. Jobs are not so big thing. But sometimes people get so attached to their jobs. Some of the jobs are terrible as well, you know, horrible. Working in terrible conditions and they don't get paid much money. And they have to be like a dog. Just like you go to see the master, sometimes we will go and see the owner of the company. And he's got his secretary there. And the secretary's job is to keep people like me away from him, <laughs> right? Because I'm coming collecting donations, contributions for the temple. And so he doesn't want to meet people like me, who, who's, I'm coming there to take money from him. He wants to meet people who are going to give him money, who's going to make money from. So, so the, we often find when you go to meet people that you have to get through the the guards, the dogs, you know, the barking dogs. They'll tell you, no, no, he can't see you today, he's too busy, no, he's in a meeting like this, you know. So they have people, people have to be like the dog for the master and they have to bark. Just like when you go to a, a, a person's house, if they have a dog, the dog will bark. And Prabhupada talks about, he said, the dog will bark and the dog is saying, why are you coming here? I'm already here. Don't you come here. Why are you coming? <laughs> it's not the same way. The people like that, they have this doggish mentality to keep you away. <laughs> All right? So is it clear about the dog? So we'll go on. What about the pig? Why are people like pigs? So, sir, much like the pig, it, it does not discriminate between the food, subs, like stuff, can eat anything. The stool, the everything thing. So, similarly, people, they don't differentiate between what is meant for human life to eat and what is meant for other animals to eat. So, they don't discriminate at all and eat everything. Yes, right. Prabhupada said, the, the, the pig will say, Oh, why you give me nice, why you offer halva to me? Give me some nice stew. You offer the pig some halva with ghee and sugar, but the pig will say, oh no, just give me some nice stew. Let me eat stew. So this is the pig mentality, like that. They can live in the most dirty, obnoxious conditions. Unfortunate creatures. So pigs, very dirty, and they have no discrimination about eating, and they have no discrimination about sexual habits as well. Okay, then camels. What is the particular nature of the camel? Why are people like camels? Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. A uh, camel is an animal who, uh, compared to people, uh, are suffering a lot, but they, to enjoy something. A camel eats uh, thorns and cuts his tongue, and that blood, mixed with the blood, he's thinking is very nice. So a human being, working very hard and trying to enjoy uh, life, but actually they are suffering in the life. Mm. Yes, they eat the thorny results of their work because they are engaged in so many different sinful activities in the course of their work. And so they simply eat the thorny results of their activities. And the camel, of course, is also a beast of burden. 
will carry a heavy burden. Oh, well, that's maybe more the ass. We're coming to the ass. Right? You can see the, the bottom right picture. The ass is there. So, the ass is a beast of burden. And his mentality is, someone would like to tell us? Foolish Maharaj, for little little bit grass, he is just holding so heavy burden. Yes, but he is a foolish. Person. He is eating. He eats grass, but Prabhupada said grass grows everywhere. But he's thinking, if I don't pull this load, I won't get any grass to eat. But the grass is everywhere. Prabhupada says doesn't have to worry about getting grass, the grass is there. The kid, he can get grass, he doesn't have to pull the heavy load, but he's thinking, if I don't eat, if I don't pull this load, I won't get grass to eat. And some more, uh, some more about the ass? So Maharaj, he is, he is over endeavouring, like in Nectar of Instruction it is said, so he is over endeavouring for things, but Krishna has given a quota for every everything, so he will, one person will get, but unnecessarily he is struggling a lot. Okay. Yes. And what about his singing? The ass likes to sing. Just like maybe you can hear the jackals outside here in Mayapur every night. The jackals, they make so much noise. And so similarly, the ass also, he likes to bray and he makes a lot of sound. And the ass is thinking, oh, I, my singing is so nice and so, so pleasing. And then also when he tries to mate, with the opposite sex, then the ass is kicked by the female. And the ass is thinking, oh, this is my enjoyment. The female ass kicked me. This is my pleasure. And so in the same way, people are like this, hogs, dogs, camels and asses. Srila Prabhupada was in Calcutta and he was invited to give a lecture to the, I think it was a Rotarian club, a club of Rotarian people, either Lions Club or Rotary Club, one of the two. So Prabhupada gave the lecture and he, he lectured, he brought up this point, how people are like hogs, dogs, camels and asses. And, the, and Prabhupada was presenting it in such a, a humorous way that all the people, they were all laughing and they were enjoying and they were so happy with Prabhupada. And they said afterwards, Oh, Swamiji, you have spoken so nicely. <laughs> they enjoyed so much and they congratulated Prabhupada. So when Prabhupada came out of the lecture and went back to the temple, Prabhupada was laughing to himself. And he said to his sannyasi secretary, he said, you see, you see, I have called them all hogs, dogs, camels and asses. And they have, they have congratulated me. <laughs> so Prabhupada said, this is, he said, this is nice, good preaching. When you can do like that, when you can explain the truth to people, in such a way that they they are pre they like it. They said this is very nice. You know? It's said in the Bhagavad Gita that we, we should should try to speak the truth and at the same time make it pleasing. And Prabhupada would quote the Sanskrit the Sanskrit phrase Satyambruyat Priyambruyat. They speak the truth but at the same time make it pleasing. So Prabhupada could do that, and he did it so wonderfully in, in this uh, Rotarian or Lions Club, and he, he just told the people, you know, hogs, dogs, camels and asses. 
the, the, these are the leaders of the society. And, the, and people are looking for the bigger dog to be their leader. People who are like hogs, dogs, camels and asses, they will select another person who is a bigger dog or a bigger hog or a bigger camel or ass as their leader. They do not know. Ordinary people, common people have no idea what is the actual position of people in the world today and who should be their actual leader. So, Shona Karishi understood these things and he explained it all very clearly in Naimisharanya 5,000 years ago. The materialistic civilization is just like this. Someone can read? One who has not listened to the messages about the pranas, prowess and marvelous acts of the Personality of Godhead and has not sung or chanted loudly the worthy songs about the Lord is to be considered to be possess, to possess ear holes like the holes of snakes and a tongue like the tongue of a frog. The upper portions of the body, though crowned with a silk turban, is only a heavy burden if not bowed down before the personality of Godhead who can award mukti, freedom. And the hands, though decorated with glittering bangles, are like those of a dead man, if not engaged in the service of the personality of Godhead, Hari. Thank you, Mataji. Yes, so Shonaka Rishi is giving some examples here about people don't like to hear, don't like to chant, don't like to hear about Krishna. And he talks about people who want to hear that their ear holes are compared to the holes of snakes. So the idea here is that generally the, the holes of a snake are, the holes are originally made by some rat. Like in the fields, the rat will make a hole in the field. And then, then the snake will come along and he'll enter into the hole and eat the rat. And so like that, our ears are like that. We don't use our ears to hear about the glories of Lord Krishna. Then the other sounds, the mundane sounds, the Gramya Kata, the Bollywood movies, all the mundane sound vibrations of this material world, they will fill the holes, just like the snake fills the holes. So the, this mundane sound will fill our ear holes if we do not take advantage to use our ears to hear about Krishna, then all the other sounds will enter into our ears. And the tongue, why is it compared to the, the frog? It attracts the snake. Yes, right. The croaking of the frog is simply bringing death nearer coming to eat the frog. And then we have the example of the, the, the head which is crowned with a silk turban. But if you don't use the head to bow before Krishna, simply a heavy burden. And the hands decorated with bangles like those of a dead man if they're not used for the service of the Lord. So very powerful preaching is given. Uh, Shona Karishi goes on, that's text 2021. Can someone read 22? Yes. Text 22, chapter 3. The eyes which do not look at the symbolic representations of the personality of Godhead Vishnu, his forms, name, equality, etc., are like those printed on the plums of the peacock, and the legs which do not move to the holy places where the Lord is remembered are considered to be like tree trunks. <laughs> right. 
So the, the eyes which don't look like the eyes printed on the plumes of the peacock. They're simply a nice decoration, but they have no value. The eyes printed on the plumes of the peacock have no power to see anything. And another, if we don't see the deities, if we don't see the form of Krishna, then there's no purpose to our eyes. And if we don't use our legs to go to visit to the holy places and to do parikrama, then our legs are like the trunks of a tree. The trunks of the tree stuck in the ground, useless. All right, someone can read here in your slide, the duty of a devotee. There are hundreds and thousands of sources for distributing mundane news of the world, and people of the world are also receiving it. Similarly, the people of the world should be taught to hear the transcendental topics of the Lord, and the devotee of the Lord must speak loudly so that they can hear. So Prabhupada says that devotees of the Lord must speak loudly so that they can hear. What does that mean? We need a loudspeaker, is it? If we have a loudspeaker, is that enough? What does it mean to speak loudly? Loudly, as in Maharaj, it can reach more people. Reaching. Maharaj, have you? So, I have, have a loudspeaker, I can reach more people. Morally. Huh? Maharaj, heavy philosophy. Heavy philosophy? Preaching. But you have to tell Bold. me how, how, are you, how are you going to do it? Bold. By setting an example, by showing as an example. Yeah, but what? What are you going to do? Just, you know, you set an example of what? Set an example to what? Sit and be silent? To how have Krishna as the center or the aim or telling them the aim of the life? But how are you going to do this? Through books and magazines. Sankirtan, temples, classes. Yeah, you want you must you want to have some kind of program to make propaganda, if an effective propaganda program to distribute the message of Krishna consciousness to a, as wide a variety of se section of the population as possible, without discrimination between who is qualified and who is unqualified. We want to distribute this message of Krishna Consciousness everywhere. And of course, this is Lord Chaitanya's movement. And Lord Chaitanya himself set the example by Sankirtan. When he was residing in Jagannath Puri, he was having everyday Sankirtan. Now, one of you said philosophy. Well, philosophy is only for a few people. Of course, there are some people who need philosophy. And we were hearing today, Druta Karma Prabhu was there on our Parikrama. And Druta Karma Prabhu is engaged in that kind of work. He's preaching to people who are scientists and who are generally atheistic and opposed to the theistic concept of life. They don't want to accept that it's a God behind the world and they just simply want to promote evolution and life came from matter and life began 2000 years ago and this kind of stuff. And so it's a very specialized preaching field, not for everyone, but some qualified devotees can do it. And there's a way to do it also. You have to write papers and you have to be able to present papers at conferences where these different people gather. So that's one way of, of reaching a particular section of the society. 
And you could say, well, speak loudly to the scientists, just like Prabhupada gave instructions to uh, Swarup Damodar Maharaj. He told him, you know, you should convince the scientists that life comes from light. He said, Swarup Damodar Maharaj was saying, I, I just want to know about my rasa with Krishna. And Prabhupada said, you just preach to the scientists that life comes from life and Krishna will reveal to you what your rasa is. So that was Prabhupada's instruction to his scientist, because Swarup Damodar Maharaj was a scientist. He had that qualification and he did wonderful service. He did introduce Krishna consciousness to so many important element, uh, uh, important eminent people in the scientific world. So speaking loudly, it's not just a, a question of how many decibels you speak with, but it's a propaganda program. You have to make a very effective propaganda to be able to reach people and to create a favorable impression on them about Krishna consciousness. So, Prabhupada is saying here, people have to hear, they, sh they, sh they should be attracted, they want to hear. And we have to think how to do it in such a way, to get the attention of the people. This is the point. How are you going to get their attention? So, that is speaking loudly, opening the doors to common people. And not only common people, but people in all walks, all levels of society, somehow introducing Krishna consciousness to them. So, Question for you, a little exercise for you. How can you enhance an appreciation of Prabhupada's mood and mission in your temple or community? Give you five minutes. How many people have we got here? Maharaj, total 21, including you. Total 21. So maybe we could have groups of four, one group of five. Total five groups, Maharaj? Yeah. And we would like to hear how you're going to enhance appreciation of Prabhupada's mood and mission in your temple or community. Uh, Maharaj, how much time? Five minutes. I've opened all the rooms and the devotees can join. Ashwini, Hare Krishna. Maharaj, you're on mute, Maharaj. Oh, I'm on mute, am I? <laughs> to Tigopi. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. We also have Ashwini Mataji with us. I suppose she's on mute. Mataji? 
हरे कृष्ण माता जी हरे कृष्ण महाराज धन्यवाद प्रणाम हरे कृष्ण So you're both from Delhi, is it? Um, I'm from Gurugram Maharaj. Ashwini Mataji, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Pune. Pune. Okay. So I think you both have some good experience in developing congregation. Lil Maharaj. Just a little. Gurugram. Business yes, capital of India. All yes, the, Maharaj. All the multinational companies are there. All all the camels and asses working here, Maharaj. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> so, uh, Maharaj, in Gurugram we have this program where every um, uh, weekend we. invite some people to speak about their realizations and experience on shila propas you know that is the way we and hands like you know they read about propas and whatever they have read throughout the week and their realization so five minutes we give each to our congregation members and that's how you know we try to make them a little attached surrender towards shila propas and his mission what you just discuss about prapa like we like it's like a proper vyas puja offering that happens it's a weekly uh, you know offering by each congregation so like if there are 10 congregation member 10 congregations in temple so one weekend one congregation will be lead reading about prapa leela amrit and share their realizations and you know how what mood and mission of prapa like his personality traits what affected them as a person you know what can they connect to so this is the way our temple president decided that it would attach make us more attached to shila propa because you know we if you have to share our realizations we have to first realize the personality when you say a congregation you mean one person or a group of people a group of people like each congregation has minimum 20 people so you know five five minutes they present each they share how was they what they read in propagli lilamrit or any past time they heard and how it affected them and you know anything they have to share so that's a program that was developed here so that we become more attached to shila propagli wow uh, <laughs> and and are you able to get contributions from the the devotees there yes maharaj even the little children Oh. They will also speak about Shri Prabhupada. They would also speak about Shri Prabhupada. Hmm. So once yes. a week you share. So this once a week. So it's once in in like if you've got ten congregations, then it's once in two and a half months. Yes, sir. Just like once in. So one congregation, it has like. Twenty people, so first uh, five minutes each. So ten people present the first time, and then the next ten people present the other weekend. So fifty one hour, one hour they give. Ten people each. Each yes. one will present. Yes, for five minutes. Oh. And the five minutes are over, Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> We didn't hear from anybody else. Ashwini Mat. Recording in progress. Hare Krishna.
Hare Krishna. Yes, Hare Krishna. All right, everyone's back. Yes, so, Maharaj, everyone's back. <laughs> All right. Uh, who was in group one? So group one had Diksha Mataji, Padma Radha Mataji, Rati Prada Mataji, and Vishnu Kanta Mataji. Oh, so many big brains. Must be very dynamic group. So, what did you discuss, ladies? So, the few points, Maharaj, we discussed was um, starting with the systematic and detailed study of uh, Bhagavad Gita, um, uh, book distribution, devotee care, home programs where we are bringing the members together and where they have a platform to discuss and share on one on one basis and build some uh, relationships. Uh, Harinams, encouraging them from kids to uh, to grown-ups. Seminars in schools and colleges related to the matters uh, which uh, which today's people are more interested in. Having some quiz sessions. Do you really think all of these things are going to help increase, you know, the Prabhupada's mood and mission? Is that really so? Is this is this? in line with Prabhupada's modern mission, everything you're mentioning? And then, uh, yes, Maharaj, because uh, we try to focus more on the seven uh, points uh, of the ISKCON, basically the missions, and going from, and, and focusing on them, how practically we can uh, bring them. Uh -huh. And that's how we're related to, and there was one more which was how Prabhupada in most of his lectures did mention about developing the mode of goodness, so encouraging more on the morning programs. Morning program? Like, you know, how, how encouraging devotees to attend the morning programs in, in all of the temple. Some brahmacharis or other people who live in the temple do attend the morning program, but encouraging the other practicing devotees as well to come at that time and attend that morning program, which everybody due to the busy schedule is probably are unable to attend. And Prabhupada has always mentioned in his lectures how that morning time, Brahma word, is a good time to, to focus on things. Do you go for morning program? Once a week only. Yeah, I always think... Always try to go more, but... Yeah, it must be difficult. Yes, working five days a week and then taking yeah. the kids to school and stuff gets hard, definitely. So we, we we actually do in our temple once a week Sunday morning program when we don't have the evening feast here in Australia. So then it does help. Okay. Then you know that something is happening. Uh -huh. And the the name of the program is called Shira Prabhupada Morning Program, actually. That's <laughs> what we are dated. Really? <laughs> yes, Prabhupada. Sunday morning, Srila Prabhupada. It is called... It's called Shira Prabhupada's morning program. And do you begin at the usual time? Yeah, yeah, it still begins at the usual time. We still encourage people, like, you know, if they can't come because some people have Saturday Bhakti Riksha, so we tell them at least come for 7 o'clock Darshan Aarti and attend the lecture. And we try to make special feasts. Like, you know, usually we don't have a big breakfast offering, but on that occasion we try to do it. That's on this specific then. Okay. Good, thank you. Interesting to hear. All right, and, and what about group number two? Group, 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 group two had um, Ashwini Mataji, Nilema Mataji, Master Sankaraj. So um, the Ashwini Mataji was sharing some points. Mataji, please unmute yourself and share um, what were your points again, please. Uh, you know what? I was actually done whatever I uh, talked in a group. Uh, that's what I meant to say. Uh, I wanted to share those many points. Like um, I, I am not uh, involved directly. I mean, uh, indirectly, I'm involved um, in. Uh, I'm conducting. I'm in the service of conducting kids classes every Sunday. So in that, that way, um, I got engaged in the um, service. But uh, like temple, temple Brahman. Temple, uh, I'm so sorry. 
Yes, go ahead, Madhuji. Uh, yes, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so temple brahmacharis, they uh, arrange um, Nagar Sankirtan every day. Uh, uh, and uh, bus party, they go for book distribution for 15 days. Uh, the bus party, I mean, there is a specific bus and they go for book distribution for 15 days. And uh, like that, many activities um, goes in temple. Um, but uh, I am not involved in any of these activities, even in Nagar Sankirtan or bus party, but I know what activities temple conducts. That's all. Okay. Thank you very much. Right, group number three. Um, Chaitanya Hari Prabhu, Chip Hari Krishna Prabhu and Nitesh Prabhu. Yes, all the Prabhus, yes. Who is the spokesman? We were discussing uh, how to enhance the appreciation of the Prabhupada's mood and mission. So some thoughts came from the devotees. One of them was by reading Srila Prabhupada Lilamrat, because Srila Prabhupada Lilamrat vividly explains the struggles and practical uh, steps which Prabhupada took to enhance the preaching mission. So by reading that, we can also get inspiration for accepting that mood and apply it in our life. Second thought was by inviting Srila Prabhupada disciples to our temples or offline or online mood because they have lived their life for Srila Prabhupada. They are associated with him. So they can instill that faith and that inspiration in our hearts also if we associate with them. And this was example. By seeing the example, we become inspired to accept Srila Prabhupada's mood and mission. And third, then there was practical experience uh, by engaging in preaching programs, like uh, going out for book distribution, like in our temple, Ujjain, we have two traveling Sankirtan parties. So by going there, we can um, feel the difficulties and uh, also we can see how the preaching expands the book distribution. So it will, it will surely inspire and develop appreciation for Srila Prabhupada's mood and mission. Another thing is Sankirtan, as um, devotees mentioned. These three things we thought of. One is example by inviting Shri Prabhupada disciples. Second is inspiration by reading Shri Prabhupada Lilambar. And third is practical experience by engaging in preaching activity. Wow, oh, very nice. Thank you so much. Are you able to implement these things in your Ujjain temple? Yes, Maharaj. We are frequently inviting Shri Prabhupada disciples and also engaging in preaching activities. And uh, as the point came, we also request Your Holiness to please visit. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay, group four. So, um, group four had Devda Dhananjay Praji, Damodar Bhakti Mataji, Parsati Mataji, and Premanand Gopinath Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Tarad Pranam. <coughs> Maharaj, uh, basically, the same answers for point for the other groups. So, we have to say that books are the basis of preaching the essence. So, uh, more books distribution should be the essence of all the temples. So, we have to say that if you, are, if you have some money, print, print the books. So, we print and distribute more books and, and preach the the people in general. So book distribution is important then uh, doing Kirtan, Sankirtan is very important. We should uh, do the specific parties and go to the various uh, communities and do Kirtan. And uh, because it's a music, so memory will be attracted to your uh, Kirtan part, party. Then uh, we have uh, uh, Prashad distribution, Prashad. Prashad is the most essence of all the things. So Prashad, we will, we will have a, Good delicious prasadam for all the people to come. So when they people eat, they will be change their consciousness. Then uh, we should also hold like we should say like kirtan mela, like we have in Mayapura, Damodar Desh. So we used to have it. So music is almost, almost mostly like that. Many people, if we hold like kirtan mela temple, 
then uh, people will be coming to your temple more and more often. Also, the most important is that your deity should be very opulent. So first is to say that you should make it so beautiful that people will come to temple often, like all the time. So uh, putting putting the deities in an opulent way is the most important. And then of course we have other like we'll put, put some uh, uh, you can say uh, uh, posters in, in your hand so you can so give, give the posters to the, to the people about Krishna Katha and like we also we can hold some Damodra Arti in the temple. Damodra is like a very nice pastimes and uh, the, 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 the children is attracted to it. So like this we can do many things to attract people in general and you can please have to Krishna in your temple. So what I'm Okay, thank you, Prabhu. Yes, nice ideas. Dhamadar and book distribution, prasadam distribution. Very nice. Duty Gopi Maharaj Yes, Maharaj. Yes, yes, Maharaj. The last group is um, uh, Dhananjay Kumar Prabhu and uh, Kanak Naik Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Mataji. So, Hare Krishna. Uh, so, I, I, I come from ISKCON Camp Pune. Uh, so, what we carry out regular activities that uh, once in a month we execute this temp temple margin uh, program on Sunday, that is immediately after uh, uh, this morning Bhagavatam classes and fist prasadam. And that helps in promoting these cooperations of different de devotees and, and, and uh, uh, working uh, uh, some menial services so that uh, uh, it develops this humbleness among, among the devotees. And then we will have a lunch prasadam. Second activity which we regularly uh, pursue and which Ashwini Mataji has mentioned that we have this regular children edu uh, education program on every uh, Sunday with uh, uh, Sankirtan and, and, and then we conduct regular workshop. Third activity we do that, uh, that Kanak Prabhu uh, leads that we have this uh, frequent uh, workshop for youth and college preaching and they take these uh, uh, students for 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 sankirtan uh, across the city and different locations and besides that uh, uh, we invite them in the temple also uh, further we uh, i uh, personally get involved in university pre preaching and uh, preaching arranging these lectures in the corporate world and different uh, scientific institutions and there we try to correlate what are the material things if we are uh, doing it and how this our uh, scriptural education should help them in solving many of the problem in a distance fashion so that is where i i, uh, I get involved and i'm doing it for uh, several e e years then we have a Garhastha Consular Services where the Garhastha Consular, they arrange this regular get together in different part of the city. And there they have a lot of community program uh, uh, workshop and along with the uh, Sankirtan. Then another thing at a temple level, what we do that we, can, we prepare for different drama and, and that program a uh, few times in a year we do it at a uh, uh, at a very large scale uh, uh, at a very prominent hall where we invite these uh, very senior dignitaries and along with uh, uh, major sankirtan and uh, uh, prasadam and this is also always interfaced all these activities it is always interfaced with uh, book distributions and other uh, 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 activities so this is how we try to uh, service the mood and missions of Srila Prabhupada by uh, developing this cooperations, doing the community services, spreading the Sankirtan name across the world. And even to the most materialist persons, we try to bring them through their fashions to ultimately to Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Okay, Prabhu, thank you. Yes, of course, Pune is a very dynamic preaching center. There's a lot of very educated and qualified people there. So certainly we would expect a lot to be going on there. And from your report we can understand nice things are happening. 
Okay, thank you very much everyone for that. We'll just go back to the PowerPoint. Are you able to see it? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Uh, right. Someone like to read this next slide? Devotees are more merciful than Krishna. Someone read? The conclusion is therefore that one should be more serious about seeking the mercy of the devotee than that of the Lord directly. And by once doing so, by the goodwill of the devotee, the natural attraction for the service of the Lord will be revived. Now this is something which sometimes puzzles people in the beginning. They're not so familiar, they don't always think that, what, devotee more merciful than Krishna? Yes, it's a fact. We have to get the mercy of the devotee. By the mercy of the spiritual master, we get the mercy of Krishna. And without the mercy of the spiritual master, there is only havoc on the path of self-realization. So, we're encouraged to understand the importance of the mercy of the devotees, from the mercy of Krishna, then only, we only qualify for the mercy of Krishna once we have the blessings of the devotee. Lord Nityananda gave mercy to Raghunath Das. Now Raghunath Das had gone first to Lord Chaitanya and Lord Chaitanya had told him, no, 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 go home and behave like a normal person. But then when he went to Lord Nityananda, then Lord Nityananda encouraged him and said, yes, in a very short time you get freed from your material situation. And so the devotees are more merciful than Krishna. In the Nectar of Devotion, Srila Prabhupada also explains this point. Do you remember? Why, does, why is Krishna not giving mercy so often? Because the devotee's love for Krishna should be increased more. Why is it said because by giving the mercy, that Krishna will be purchased by the person. So that's why he doesn't give it so easily, devotion. Right. Devotion. Krishna does, devotee. Krishna does, he gives himself, for example, he gave himself to Arjuna and the Pandavas. He became Arjuna's chariot driver. And he became Maharaj Yudhisthira's messenger. He has to become controlled and purchased. He becomes tied up by Mother Yashoda. These things happen to him when he gives himself to his devotee. So Lord Krishna is very cautious about giving himself to the devotees. But the devotees are more merciful because they understand the purpose of the Lord. So it's the goodwill of the devotee. So we do need to get the mercy of the devotee. Okay, going ahead. Text number 24. Someone like to read for us? Srimad Bhagavatam 2, 324. Certainly that heart is still same, which in spite of one chanting the holy name of the Lord with concentration, does not change when ecstasy takes place. Tears fill the eyes and the hair stand on. And right. This is a, an important verse in Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, we want you to also read and discuss Prabhupada's purport. This, this verse that a heart is described as being still framed if when we chant the holy name, although one may be chanting the holy name with concentration, 
In other words, he's chanting without offense. But the heart doesn't change even though ecstasy takes place. So the ecstasy is a sign that the devotee is chanting at the level of bhava. Because ecstasy, tears are filling the eyes, the hairs are standing on end. These are symptoms that one has achieved the level of bhava bhakti. But in spite of that, sometimes it happens that the heart doesn't change. So, before, maybe before you read the purport, we'll just have a look here. Uh, the Prabhupada's quote, right? The change in heart. The mature stage of Vishnu worship is suggested herein in relation to the change of heart. The whole process of spiritual culture is aimed at changing the heart of the living being in the matter of his eternal relation with the Supreme Lord as subordinate servant, which is his eternal constitutional position. It is expected by all means that by discharging regulated devotional service, one must manifest a change of heart. So the change of heart, what is this change of heart? The whole process is aimed at changing the heart of the living entity. So actually we'll just go to the, right? What, here's what we want you to do. Have a partner. And to what extent, oh, to what extent have we experienced a change of heart as a result of studying Srimad Bhagavatam? Can you just take five minutes to discuss this? Uh, sure, Maharaj. I'll make the groups again. Yes, pairs. Breakout rooms are now open. They will Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj Dandvat Pranam. Dandvat Pranam. My obeisance is to you. So, have you experienced a change of heart? by studying Srimad Bhagavatam? Yes, Maharaj, because uh, uh, it all started my journey 38 years back under the uh, very uh, 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 loving guidance of uh, uh, His Grace, Prithu Prabhu. Uh, and uh, and uh, that time, of course, I was quite young at the age of 17. so. Maharaj was very delicately and very kindly they were helping us to understand these uh, uh, various scriptures and so 
uh, as students, we have been working very hard. We had a lot of material ambitions. So he did say that uh, we have to uh, uh, leave everything and uh, uh, join full-time uh, temple, of course, from our community, because I come from one of the IIT, IIT Kanpur, uh, which was under the preview of uh, Pitu Prabhu. So he never said that you leave all your material ambitions, but try to modulate and use it in uh, uh, the service that will give you uh, happiness that will also able to de-stress. So that is how I started the journey and slowly with more associations and the community started building in and growing slowly. We learned uh, uh, corporations, we learned the stress management and so much examples uh, of uh, uh, different eminent personality in, in the Srimad Bhagavatam which guided us to stay humble when the difficulty is there, always surrender to the Lord and always stay in, 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 the, in the service of Lord and whatever things, because there are a lot of stresses in life, both in terms of meeting this short-term and long-term material ambitions. So what they guided through the scriptures and with various associations, so slowly our heart started getting purification and started, and those material ambitions slowly started converging with uh, uh, little spiritual gain and we, we turn towards more uh, towards the spiritual end. and when we uh, entered in the professional world because I come from uh, uh, started my career as a scientist so as, as, a, as a scientist when we are working we always think because a lot of uncertainties are there like from our uh, material knowledge we cannot define and, 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 and control our destiny because I am involved in missile program and all those kind of activities of failures we cannot uh, define in spite of hard work. So we developed the whole scientific community too much believe in, uh, in, in in the power of the, uh, God and ultimately this working for uh, a bigger aim. Again now when I come to the academics and uh, uh, now associating with large number of students so uh, uh, this uh, uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, because here we, we, we see a different, first of all, it is in a very gradual stages of purifications and by example where the intensity keeps on growing and ultimately in the Canto 10, it's talk about the uh, uh, complete Krishna Prem. So like that, in, in, in the experience, what we are guiding we, from our own experience in life, we don't tell them drastically to leave everything. Of course, we give them example from Srimad Bhagavatam, various very uh, austere devotees and how they in a very short period or with a different uh, period of endeavors, those, those, were, those people are very great soul, but still they have passed through the consequences of uh, this uh, material prank and ultimately with the mercy of the Lord, they could able to uh, uh, get the ultimate uh, 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 liberations. So we always tell uh, the student from from this our Srimad Bhagavatam that uh, you you can carry out your material uh, endeavor, but that also we have to uh, uh, do in the service of the Lord, and then we have to keep on participating in temple activities, and slowly this all this anatta uh, uh, will be removed and you can able to be more happier in life. So this is what we, I try to uh, um, preach, practice and learn from our scriptures in last 30 years of my journey. Mm -hmm. Okay. So are you getting rid of your anathas? Yes. We are trying to, because basically then, uh, of course, there are a lot of uh, pranks, a lot of concepts. Um, Recording in progress. Okay, we welcome everyone back.
Would anyone like to volunteer to share uh, anything they discussed? Hi, Krishna Maharaj, you are on mute, Maharaj. Okay. Kindly unmute yourself. Okay, well, so welcome everyone back. And uh, I'd like to ask for volunteers, maybe some people who have not spoken or something, would like to hear something about what you discussed, what you feel is the, the change of heart. Yes? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Yes. Who is this? Yes, Mataji. Yes. So could you tell us what Guru it, Maharaj, as what the time begins as in the morning. What's that? We remain daily absorbed in the material world. I'm not audible? No, you're clear. Am I? Yes. Go ahead. Guru Maharaj, as the time begins in the morning, in the daytime, we remain absorbed in this material world. But, but the time, as only the Zoom class starts, we, have, we see the disciples and we see the devotees. There is all of a sudden, there is a drastic change in our heart that Yes, this is the real position of our, why we wasted our whole day, why we remain busy in this material world, doing the job, and uh, all the time we uh, remain forgetful about the Krishna. The time we see the devotees, the time we see the disciples, there is a change in our heart. Yes, this is our real position. Yes. We are Krishna consciousness. This is the constitutional position. Oh. Is this all due to studying Srimad Bhagavatam? Mariji, can you hear me? There is a breach. Hare Krishna. Yes, can you hear me? I want yes. you to know is, is, is this direct result of studying Srimad Bhagavatam? Yes, can you hear me? Judy Gopi, can you hear me okay? Yes, Naraj, we can hear you okay. Her uh, network, it seems it's a little unstable, like it's dropping in between. Mataji, okay. Mata you can stop the video and just play the audio. Um. Okay, let's hear from someone else. Maya, so uh, Chithari Krishna Prabhu and I had discussed about this. And what we, we covered around three points. We said that may, when we read Bhagavatam, so the result is that we some or the other how we get inspired to live like the characters mentioned in Bhagavatam. Like when we hear about the pastimes of Prahlad Maharaj. So we see how he was protected by Lord and we get that faith that, you know, maybe not of time, we will also be protected. Krishna will take care. If we keep going on, you know, stay in the process. If we are there in the process, we'll achieve what those devotees have. And it also gives us like this hope, like in Bhagavatam, many have passed, although they, there are many pastimes of people who had like fall down in their life, but they still some other that how by mercy, by taking holy names, they pass. So it makes us feel hopeful. You know, it's a change of heart. Like we feel hopeful, we our faith strengthens. And the third point is that um, in throughout the day, we are begging for different things. Like we are begging for maybe that car, maybe for that promotion, maybe for that, etc., etc., etc. But when we read Bhagavatam, we study Bhagavatam, um, we see how the devotees are only begging for pure devotion. And then our consciousness shifts, our heart wants now pure devotion. It changes from begging for material things to begging for pure devotional service. So this were the point, these were the points that we covered. And if Chithari Prabhu, you want to add something, kindly add. Uh, thank you. You covered all points which we discussed. Okay. Yes. 
very interesting to hear. Do you feel you've cultivated some uh, greater uh, extent in detachment or renunciation from the world, from hearing Srimad Bhagavatam? Yes, Maharaj, like fluctuating. When we read Bhagavatam, we get some renunciation. When we stop reading Bhagavatam and go back to our material life, living that life, then we get more attached. Such so bhok tyag, bhok tyag. <laughs> Attached, detachment, detachment, detachment. <laughs> Bogatyag. Yes, Maharaj, I also felt that when Mahashrimad Bhagavatam reading is going on regular basis, then also attachment and pace for chanting also increases. And the next morning, or we feel that. Otherwise, uh, it is difficult sometimes. Yes, right. It's very important to hear to help to keep up our chanting, to get that taste for chanting. Yes, good point. Thank you, Prabhu. All right, someone else is there? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah. I have myself and Premanand Gopinath Prabhuji discussed and and that this realization was like he, uh, he left everything and uh, for uh, Rimad Bhagavatam and daily 10 hours he is, he is reading Srimad Bhagavatam and uh, he said that daily he is uh, remembering one shloka. So that is uh, very inspiring for me. Mm. Remembering a shloka. How many shlokas of the Bhagavatam have you memorized now? Maharaj. Uh, I don't remember only five, six, but Prevan and Gokunath Prabhuji have told that every day he is remembering one shloka. Okay, good. It's nice to know slokas, certainly. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati could speak on one sloka for a month or more. Well, he did. He spoke on the first verse for one month, but he could have spoken more. There's no limit because he could explain every word. So, there's so much in Srimad Bhagavatam. Yes, we just take one more contribution. Maybe some other person like to speak to us, give us something they discussed. Maharaj, Maharaj, we discussed uh, um, myself and uh, Prabhu, of course. Yes. Chaitanya Hari Prabhu. Uh -huh. Chaitanya Hari Prabhu myself discussed our uh, each each of our points. So Chaitanya Hari Prabhu was telling that uh, by reading Srimad Bhagavatam, the initial knowledge of devotional service develops that I need to chant better. And secondly, uh, he feels that it helps him to understand that the material world is very temporary and there is a permanence of the spiritual world. And uh, he knows more about detachment and uh, material life and detachment go ill together. So he was telling that these three aspects become more clearer. And uh, then I shared about that three points that I feel much inspired is that uh, by the grace of a pure devotee, there are three basic lines from Bhagavatam. What I always try to remember is, by the grace of pure devotee, we get mercy of Krishna. And by the mercy of Krishna, we get the service of a pure devotee. So I have always felt in my life that by the mercy of spiritual master only, I have got, uh, I can please Krishna. So it goes in on hand in hand. Whenever I'm able to serve, I try, I feel that I'm pleasing Krishna. And second, that by service, we build transcendental relationships. So this line is also in Srimad Bhagavatam. So whenever I'm preaching to devotees, I feel that I will. I, it is easier for me to make transcendental relationships rather uh, anchoring for uh, so many uh, material uh, relationships. So these two points help me a lot from Srimad Bhagavatam, which I feel practically helping me and going with me every step and every moment in my life. 
Very good. Very nice. Yes, Srila Prabhupada writes in one purport, he says that simply by studying Srimad Bhagavatam, he says one day you will go on to see Krishna in the pages of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So if we're anxious to see Krishna, just keep reading Srimad Bhagavatam and one day we will actually see Krishna there in the pages of the Srimad Bhagavatam. All right. So let's look what we covered here in this class today. We spoke about the connection between the second and the third chapter. Remember, at the end of the second chapter, Sukadeva Goswami had described about pure devotional service, and he was describing about having no material desires and so on. And so the question comes up in the third chapter, what if we still have material desires? So Sukadeva Goswami then explained about demigods and how there are many different demigods and according to your desire you can worship the appropriate demigod. And that led to the discussion, he then went on from introducing, after explaining about demigod worship, then he explained about pure devotional service and how you can simply worship the Supreme Lord and fulfill all of our desires, even we have material desires, still we should worship the Supreme Lord and he can satisfy everyone's desires. So that's the connection between the two chapters. And the overview of chapter 3, well, we heard about uh, Sukadeva Goswami explaining about the worship of the Supreme Lord, right? Tivrena Bhakti Yogena, people with broader intelligence. It was described those people who have broader intelligence will worship the Supreme Lord. And then Sukadeva Goswami went on to describe how to get that broader intelligence, right? Do you remember? Right? Maybe we'll, we'll ask Vishnu Kanti Mataji, how do you get that broader intelligence? Vishnu. Yes. Vishnu Kanti Maharaj, did you hear? Through association of devotees. Vishnu devotees. Yes, you have to associate with the pure devotees. With the pure devotees. And I thought that it was explained also about how to count, you know, recognizing pure devotees. And we spoke about the Nitya Siddha and like that, different levels of devotees. So Nitya Siddha, Sadhana Siddha, the Nitya Siddha never forgets Krishna and the Sadhana Siddha, he's learning to remember Krishna, he's doing Sadhana. By Sadhana he can become perfect. So the Sadhana Siddha in the beginning he was not perfect but he became perfect by practice. Nitya Siddha, they're eternally perfect. They never forget Krishna. So that, those were an understanding. Then Udharadi, the broader outlook. One should worship Krishna in relation to demigod worship and materialism. And materialism. in general. <laughs> All right, so broader intelligence. You want to worship demigods, you have a hard time, very laborious, you have to worship, you'd have to worship many demigods to fulfill all your desires and still you may, may, may miss some or you may make some mistakes 
demigods can be easily angered and they're not going to purify you and the results are always limited and temporary. So people who have the broader outlook, the Udara D, broader intelligence, they will worship the Supreme Lord. Materialism, whether we have all material desires, doesn't matter. You shouldn't think, oh no, I, I'm not pure enough to worship Krishna. You don't have to be. You can have all material desires, but still you can worship Krishna. And if, if these desires are good for you, Krishna can fulfill them. So you have to consider the statement, very authoritative statement. Then we spoke about how the sun fails to rob the pure devotee of the duration of life because the devotee is acting on the transcendental platform. So the sun mounts the wheel of time, but for one who is on the transcendental platform, he's not under the influence of time. He's, trans he's transcended that. So we're encouraged to always utilize ourselves in the service of Krishna. And that way we can live or we can go on to an immortal life. And then text 17 up to 28, we were hearing Shonakarishi speak. And so there were different analogies mentioned in the section. Who can remember one analogy? Krishna Kanti, can you give me one analogy from that section? Shonakarishi's analysis? Oh. What? No, I asked Krishna Kanti, I didn't ask you. Please give other people a chance, right? Krishna Kanti Maharaji, have you got an example? What is one analogy? Maharaji is Vishnu Kanta. Vishnu Kanta, okay, Vishnu Kanta. Yeah, the head is like a heavy burden. Uh, you may be decorated with a nice turban on your head, but it's just a heavy burden if you don't bow before the deity. And eyes like the impression on the people, uh, the, uh, if they, they do not see, if it, they do not see the deity. Um, right, the eyes are like the eyes which are printed on the plumes of the peacock, right? The eyes are like those eyes printed on the plumes of the peacock feathers. Yes, and the legs which don't walk to the holy places are like the trunks of the tree. Trunk of the tree stuck in the ground. Useless. Right? I can't Yes, my do not serve uh, is like that. Um, even with glittering bangles, it is like um, that person's hand. Yes, bangles on the head, on the hands, bangles on the hands are useless if the hands are not used for the service of the Lord. Right? The bangles, you may be decorated with many bangles. But if you don't use your hands for the service of the Lord, then it's useless. This is Shonakarishi's statement. Yes, good. And then also the, the tongue is like what? Uh, it's frog, uh, it's like frog's tongue. Yeah, the croaking of the frog. The frog's tongue just simply brings death nearby. And the ear holds? The ear holds like... Snake hole. Yes, There's like the holes of the snake, the snake holes. Good, okay, yeah. 
So I think you got all then. Then Srimad Bhagavatam describes a society in terms of hogs, dogs, camels and asses. Right? We discussed that quite thoroughly. I think you got it clear. It's powerful, strong preaching. Prabhupada could present it very nicely. People enjoyed it. They laughed. <laughs> they congratulated Prabhupada and thanked him. And Prabhupada said, you see, I have called them all hogs, dogs, camp. They did not realize Prabhupada was talking about them. <laughs> And then the statement about seeking the mercy of the pure devotee more than that of the Lord directly. That we have to get the mercy of the devotees first. Personal application. This is important for us in our devotional service. We don't neglect the devotees. We want to get the blessing of the devotee. And the devotees are more merciful than Krishna. They will bring us to Krishna. They Some examples about devotees being more merciful than Krishna. Well, Krishna was going to kill Jagai in Madhai. Lord Chaitanya was going to kill Jagai in Madhai. But Lord Nityananda was more merciful and reminded Lord Chaitanya that, my Lord, in this age you have to be merciful. So the mercy of the devotees is so important. Lord doesn't give mercy so freely. But the devotees are more kind than Krishna. Because they know, the, they know Krishna's mood. Krishna likes to give credit to his devotees. Though so Krishna himself doesn't directly, or very rarely he will give the mercy directly. But he likes his devotees to get the credit. Devotees like Narada Muni and Uddhava and so on, they get the credit. And then we've been speaking, at, just at the end, we spoke about the change of heart, how it can actually happen in our lives. And it, it can happen just by simply chanting and hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, by following this program of hearing and chanting, by taking part in this program regularly, then certainly we can achieve this change of heart. Change of heart, meaning we can develop this attachment to Krishna and we can lose the taste for materialistic life. We can see the, the, the hopelessness and the futility in all our material endeavors, that it's all finished with the change of body. And then, this final statement here, from text number 20. Similarly, the people of the world should be taught to hear the transcendental topics of the Lord. And the devotees of the Lord must speak loudly so that they can hear. So we discussed about how we're going to speak loudly. We're not going to just buy an amplifier and have a loudspeaker system. That's not the meaning. But speak loudly, the idea is to reach people in every walk of life, in different levels of society, in different conditions. Not to make distinction about who's qualified and who's not, but to try to give to everyone. Just like Ramanuja, a great Vaishnava, he got the mantra and his guru told him, this mantra can liberate you, but it's secret, don't give it to anyone. 
And so after Ramanuja got the mantra, he went up on the rooftops and he began to call out to people, chant this mantra, it can liberate you. So when the Guru heard that he was telling everyone to chant the mantra, Guru was shocked. He said, I told you that mantra was secret, what are you doing? But Ramanuja said, but you said it can liberate everyone. I want to liberate everyone. I want to give that to him. So his guru then understood, well, oh, this is very good. He's a very good devotee. He wants to deliver everyone. So we should think how we can make Krishna consciousness acceptable to people, how to make it palatable, how to bring people into this Krishna consciousness. This is our duty. If we have appreciated Krishna consciousness, we should want to share it with others. All right, are there any questions? Uh, yes, Maharaj Ji. Hare Krishna, Dandavatana. Hare Krishna. Well, dis uh, well discussing, uh, you are saying, why Krishna does not reveal his affection to the devotee immediately? So, uh, Chaitanya Krishna was probably told that if Krishna, if Krishna, uh, Krishna does not immediately reveal uh, uh, no, something else, yes, to, actually I forgot. But my question is that I could not understand this clearly. Can you please uh, answer me this? Why doesn't Krishna reveal that properly, uh, immediately? Why doesn't Lord Krishna reveal himself to new devotees? Huh? Yes. Is yes, that yes. is that your question? Yes, this is my question. Well, if Lord Krishna was to make himself fully accessible to new devotees, they wouldn't know quite how to relate to Krishna. Lord Krishna likes to associate with the devotees. He's he's he takes pleasure in being with the devotees. He doesn't get much pleasure from being with people who are not yet devotees. So new people, they haven't really cultivated much devotion. They're just thinking about Krishna consciousness. They haven't made up their mind yet if they really want to come in to the association of devotees. They're thinking about it. So Lord Krishna has he has revealed himself, he has given something. Actually, Krishna himself says, as they surrender, I reward them accordingly. So Krishna has, he has revealed himself in different ways. Just like Lord Krishna says, I am the taste in water, I am the light of the sun and the moon, the syllable Om and the Vedic mantras, in so many ways, Lord Krishna has revealed himself in a, a feature according to their qualification to understand Krishna. Now when, they, when devotee becomes more qualified, then Krishna will reveal himself more. Qualified means they have to know how to appreciate Krishna. Now some things about Krishna are very difficult to understand. There's even a saying, they say, act like Ram, but worship Krishna. So, we're, we can follow better the example of Lord Rama than we can of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna's activities can be controversial and difficult to understand unless one is a, a little advanced in devotional service. But Lord Rama's activities are much easier to understand. His obedience, his faithfulness, his chastity, these things. He shows perfect character. So that example is there. So we're encouraged, 
follow the example of Lord Rama, but at the same time worship Lord Krishna, because Lord Krishna is the Supreme. He's superior even to Lord Rama. Lord Rama. So new devotees, they have not, they're not very much convinced about who's supreme and what, who's the, who's the supreme God. They're still thinking about it. They're hearing, they're checking everything out. So it takes time. But if they're faithful to the process, in course of time, Krishna will reveal himself. But as I said, it, it's difficult to understand Krishna, difficult to understand his different activities, because they're the activities of the Supreme Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, acts in special ways. And without having a pure heart, and without being free of false ego, and, feel, and without being free of our own uh, material consciousness, we, we won't be able to appreciate the activities of Lord Krishna. So we do have to hear more, and the more we hear, then the more we become qualified to understand Krishna. But for new devotees, well, Krishna reveals himself according, according, he does reveal, I give examples. Krishna knows everyone's heart and he knows what's good for them. And Krishna doesn't make himself so cheap, doesn't give himself so easily to everyone. Okay, any other questions? All right, so Duty Gopi, Madhiji. Um, yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. So what about tomorrow night? What did you decide? Uh, so, Maharaj, um, earlier we were supposed to have our um, exam on 3rd, but um, like if you want, we can postpone it by one day or a week. So by what uh, day do you think, Maharaj, that we will be done with our chapter 5? Uh, like, this week, next week, next week, Friday, or the, then we can have our exam on Saturday? Or just we should, or should we just post 